Oh, good morning. I hope everybody can hear me. And uh, Monday morning, first day of the week. Uh, as I said in, I think, a lot of the sessions already, the first five minutes, it's just for us to say hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And um, the call will actually start um, sort of five minutes in, five minutes-ish in. So I'm not late, April. <laughs> And I hope everybody had a nice weekend. What are you supposed to do here? Well, Shreya, if you have a question, mark it as a question. And um, you can do that where you write your message. You'll see a little drop down menu. And if you click on that, you can mark your question as a question. So let me do that for you. You see how it's now got a big um, bright question mark next to it. The reason you do that is so I can notice that you've asked a question. If the call gets busy, um, I'll try to answer everybody's questions, but it's a lot easier for me if you mark them as a question, okay? So I will answer you and um, I will say at Shreya, Shreya, yep, at Shreya, uh, First, we will say hi, <laughs> then we will look at the vocabulary challenge from last week. Now, if you don't know what the vocabulary challenge is, then um, you'll, you'll learn today and maybe you can get involved next week. Okay, so I'll start screen sharing now. Bear with me a second. Challenge. Um, if there are no more questions, the vocab challenge. Very important um, that you know where it is first. It's on the forum. <laughs> But it's not on the forum in the main pages, it's in the groups. So if you want to take part in the vocabulary challenge, there's one every week. And just follow the instructions you'll find under groups. You'll find um, a topic called vocabulary challenge with a number. So as you can see, we've done 46 so far. Not quite a year's worth, but nearly. And then um, you'll find the actual challenge under the link you'll find how to log in and you'll also see in the calendar that it's only on from Tuesday to Thursday. So you have to get your answers in by Thursday. Okay, but a few of us um, took part. So and everybody did very well. It was slightly different this week. It was more uh, definitions this week. So April and Shiny, Landai, Monique, Julie and Hazel, um, all of you very well done for taking part. Um, so before I give you the actual answers, any questions about the challenge? Was uh, Shiny, you mentioned something uh, that some of the words have more than one answer. Yeah, and um, that's the case with many English words. There's more than one definition. OK, um, but only one definition would have fitted each of those uh, questions. OK, so really, um, yes, there's always going to be more than one definition in many English words, but context is king, as I always say to you. You have to look at the context and which one fits. Um, so for the one you struggled with, and there were a few with more than one meaning, but the one you struggled with, unfortunately, has a slightly rude answer as well. Uh, but you should know me better by now. Only one of the actual answers fitted the word. <laughs> OK, um, let me just have a look at the webinar. Bear with me a second. Somebody's asked me a question and I can't see it clearly. So hang on a second. Whoop, nope. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. That's odd. Um, okay. 
So I see that blue broadcast with this laptop, Lynn. Oh, April. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why you're seeing that. Um, it might be that you need to clear the cache on your laptop. Um, but I should be the only one who is blue because I'm presenting. Shiny shouldn't be in blue. <laughs> okay. You think April got it right? Yeah, most of you got it right, actually. Most of you got it right. So well done. It wasn't difficult, but and there's no cheating in the um, in this particular challenge. You can Google your answers. You can check your answers. You can use a dictionary. I don't mind. It's not a test. OK, so don't worry about some people ask me, is it OK to use a dictionary? Yes, of course it is. That's what you would do in real life. It's not a test. It's a challenge. OK. <laughs> OK, so let's have a look at the actual answers. Um, first of all, we need to look at the questions, of course. So the questions uh, were slightly different, as I say. Normally we do a picture, but this week we did um, definitions. So I gave you a word, and you had to correct, you had to guess or work out the correct definition for each word. And the words were a little tricky, I think. Okay. So the first one was ricer. Now. As learners, you probably saw the word rice and thought, well, it must be something to do with cooking rice or someone who grows rice. But it isn't. It's neither of those things. It's basically, it's a kind of, it looks like a sieve or it looks like a colander, which we'll come to later. Uh, and it forces potatoes, cooked potatoes through it in order to mash them. Now, when you're cooking potatoes, you can do mashed potatoes with a masher, which involves a lot of hard work from your shoulder and your arm. Uh, or you can use a ricer. And a lot of professional chefs use a ricer. Now, here's a picture of a ricer. OK, you put the potatoes into the um, sort of colander sieve part and there's a handle and there's a plate. Um, a metal plate and as you push the handle down the metal plate pushes forces the potatoes through the little holes until you end up with these riced potatoes which are like mashed potatoes okay so that if you all found a, a picture of it and I do recommend for some of these challenges pictures are always best uh, this will give you an idea of what a ricer is and it has nothing to do with rice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not really. I found it quite funny. But yes, it's a, it's not even a trick word. It's just a word that's come about, I suppose, because when the potato comes out, it comes out in little white pieces, maybe looks a little bit like rice. Uh, oh, I OK, April, yes, I've got you now. Yes, I wrote good morning, afternoon, evening, hello. I see what you mean. I thought you meant it was blue on uh, Shiny's uh, name. You told me Shiny was showing up blue the other week. Yes, that's that's the um, highlighted message. When you're presenting April, you'll be able to do that too. <laughs> OK, is that clear now, April? OK, let me clear the message then so so as not to um, that blue broadcast with this laptop. Yeah, sorry, I did. I did misunderstand you. <laughs> not not the way you, you wrote it, though. Just me. Just me. It's Monday morning. OK, the next word that we had was dredger. And again, dredger. Now, ricer only has one meaning. As far as I can find out, there's no ulterior motive. It's just got that word rice in it that can be confusing. Dredger, that is confusing because a dredger can be more than one kind of dredger, one of which is used in the kitchen, the other one not used in the kitchen. OK, so a dredger, nothing to do with um, frying, nothing to do with tea. You might, if you'd just um, searched for the term dredger, you might have come across these guys. 
Did any of you see these dredges? And that would be um, quite, yeah, quite difficult to figure out what's that got to do with kitchen utensils. <laughs> these dredges are used literally to dredge riverbeds and bays, anywhere that might get silted up. Okay. But none of the definitions given had anything to do with rivers or removing silt from water. So you can rule out these dredgers and we'll go on to this kind of dredger. And I've got one in my kitchen cupboard. It's also called a flower shaker. Uh, Rima, yeah, Marco, you've just written a strong grip is important when you're using a ricer yes you need a strong grip <laughs> because you're really forcing the cooked and you need well cooked potatoes as well don't do it with half cooked potatoes it'd be very difficult <laughs> but anyhow back to the dredger now in these dredgers you can put flour in and sometimes people put sugar in okay and if you notice here it's got flour shaker dredger so it's a flour shaker or a flour dredger so well done everybody a sugar or flour holder with fine holes in its lid question what would you want such a thing for why would you want a dredger any ideas has anybody ever used one so has anyone ever used a dredger or has anyone got a dredger in the kitchen. Okay, what do you call a person who grows rice? Um, well, somebody who owns it, yeah, just a rice farmer. Okay, a rice farmer. And they work in the paddy. Remember when we did our sessions on growing rice, April? Uh, we went through the vocabulary then. Uh, you work in the paddy fields when you're growing rice, but a rice farmer. Yes, well done, Shiny, a farmer. Nobody's actually got a dredger. Okay, well, it's very useful if you're making pastry or bread. And you basically use the dredger to put a thin layer of flour on the board. And it's actually the verb. We don't use the verb to dredge here. Okay, to dredge means... Um, if you dredge something, it goes to the river terminology, okay? So if you said, um, I dredged the flour, we wouldn't use that. It's, it is basically uh, to clean out the bed of a harbour or river by scooping out mud, weeds and rubbish with a dredge. So you couldn't use the verb to dredge when you're using the flower dredger, when you're using the flower shaker. So, as a verb, you'd use to flower, okay? Um, and that's where English can get really confusing, I know. So, you have to just accept it <laughs> and understand that. When you use a dredger in the kitchen, you can use it to flour, baking tin, or a work surface. So the verb is to flour, not to dredge. And there are quite a few English words where this sort of thing happens. So you think it's a dredger, it must dredge. It doesn't. Context and form and a little bit of confusion always rules when it comes to English vocabulary. Okay. Hi, Mars. Nice to see you. Yes, April, you can use a sieve. Of course you can. Uh, but a dredger gives you a bit more control. And you can keep the flour in the dredger. Okay. And then it's there to be used any time you want to flour a board or when you want to flour a tin. Uh, apologies to the guys here. This is all kitchen vocabulary today. <laughs> but some of you might like cooking. My husband likes cooking. <laughs> I don't know if he knows what a dredger is for, though, because he doesn't bake. <laughs> okay, the next word we had was coddler, a coddler. Okay, and the choices were, is it a tea towel holder? a utensil for cooking eggs, or a child just a bit older than a toddler. 
which really it should be, shouldn't it? But it isn't. It was actually a utensil for cooking eggs, an egg coddler. The only place you'd really find these nowadays is in hotels where they cook your eggs and they have them out keeping warm. OK, so I wouldn't expect to find it um, in a kitchen, a normal kitchen. I haven't got an egg coddler. OK, but this is what they look like. They're little. Um, sometimes they can be quite pretty little pots where you put the egg in and then you put the egg into boiling water. You put the pot into boiling water and when you pull it out, there it is, nicely cooked, uh, almost like poached, but not actually touching the water so it doesn't get watery. OK, but cooked at a nice, even temperature and not fatty, no butter, no frying involved. OK, so quite healthy. OK, so. Dredger is noun. Yes. Uh, Julie, don't forget to mark your questions. OK, so I see them. I missed that one. A uh, dredger um, is a noun. Yes. And to dredge is the verb, but has nothing to do with the flower dredger. OK, that is to flower. OK. OK, so let's get back to our egg coddler. And um, as I say, something that you might find in a very old fashioned kitchen, a Victorian kitchen, but also still used in hotels. OK, the first place you'd see it uh, now to coddle the verb to coddle can actually mean uh, something else. So to coddle something um, can mean to cook the egg. So you can coddle in an egg coddler. But you can also coddle somebody if you treat them in a very um, overprotective way. And we have this lovely word called mommy coddled <laughs> to mommy coddle somebody. And that means basically um, when you overprotect your children, if you're a mother especially, and you overprotect a child, you mommy coddle them. OK. So some nice verbs, uh, some nice words coming out here. I'll, I'll write it up so you can look it up in the dictionary to mommy coddle somebody. OK, but to coddle can mean to cook an egg in this way, in this pan of water. It can also mean to overprotect someone. So again, the words have more than one meaning. The context is what you have to work with. You need to know the context. OK. Yeah, it is only mommy coddle. I've, I've never seen, I've never heard mummy coddle. Um, I've only ever heard it as mommy coddle. OK. OK, um, April's just asked, you break the egg. Yes, you break the egg into the coddler. Otherwise, you might as well just boil the egg. Because if you put the egg in its shell into the boiling water, that becomes a boiled egg, not a coddled egg. So the idea is you break the egg into the little pot, then you screw on the lid and you put it into the boiling water and it cooks and it makes sure that the egg stays just below boiling temperature. OK, and so it cooks quite slowly. I think you need about six to eight minutes to coddle an egg, whereas you can boil an egg in four minutes because it's directly in the water. But um, I've never done it myself. I like poached egg. Now, a poached egg, you break the egg directly into the water. And um, poached eggs are really difficult to get right. You can really make a mess with the poached egg. But I love poached eggs. So when I go and have full English breakfast in a hotel or bed and breakfast, they always say, how would you like your eggs? And I say poached. And you can see they go a little pale because poaching eggs is a skill. So that's why I get other people to do it for me. <laughs> OK. You thought it's the same as a boiled egg. Oh, no, Marco, no. Eggs are amazing things. I think we covered a few of the verbs and the ways of cooking them in one of our sessions. You can fry them, scramble them, poach them. You can coddle them. Um, you can do them over easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's so many you can make omelets with them so, they're wonderful they're the best fast food um out there if you don't know how to cook an egg well shame on you you need to learn they're brilliant i love eggs <laughs> okay so let's get back to our text a bain marie yeah, or a ban marie. I I don't know whether I say I tend to say bain marie, but a lot of people use the French, the ban marie, and you'll find a lot of French words in cooking. Okay, um, so a bain marie is just or a ban marie is just a container, and you put hot water into the container and it keeps it hot, and then you can use it for slow cooking or for keeping keeping things warm okay so a ban marie or a bain marie um, is another cooking utensil again something you'd normally find in professional kitchens in hotel kitchens uh, but you can make a ban marie if you want to do that kind of cooking you can make one quite simply at home just have a big um, metal maybe a baking tray put water in it heat it up stick whatever you want into it um, to keep it hot or to cook it slowly okay so in this one we had three different definitions a water bath to ensure slow cooking a type of whisk a very shallow frying pan well a bain is a water bath to ensure slow cooking okay so this is how you would use a bain you'd have your source of heat you'd have your container of water and then you'd have your extra container which has the food in it and you put that into the hot water okay quite often suspended so it's not touching the heat okay the idea is the water keeps it hot not the flame or the um, oven hob okay so things cook slowly or things are kept nice and warm without the risk of burning them that's the idea of a ban marie okay okay i can see a couple of questions coming up bear with me a second whilst i check them okay um marco not a pooched egg it's got nothing to do with <laughs> nothing to do with poochers a poached egg p-o-a-c-h-e-d a poached egg okay POA don't forget you can um, correct your sentences by using the edit button the little pencil um, just hover your mouse over your message and um, you can click on the little pencil and you can edit any spelling mistakes or anything you want to remember for next time or for the uh, replay so it looks correct <laughs> I can edit it, oh be warned I can edit it for you as well so let me do that and don't forget your um, articles yeah so not poached egg a uh, poached egg okay okay let's move on then the next one was a spatula okay now we've got three uh, definitions again spatula a junior chef do you work as a spatula in the kitchen no a long flat blade a funnel and the answer everybody got this one right I think a long flat blade okay so when you have um, a long flat blade it can be different kinds of spatula okay it's a very generic thing isn't it a long flat blade what kind of long flat blade <laughs> and form and function again this is the kind of spatula i used to love as a child do anybody know what this spatula is used for strange pronunciation yes <laughs> um you can use a bain marie to melt chocolate absolutely uh, because if you try to melt chocolate directly onto a flame you're likely to burn it okay so back to spatula um, this spatula was my favorite because you can use it to clean the sides of the bowl when your mother's making cakes and uh, if you're very lucky you get the bowl and the spatula at the end and you get to eat the cake the raw cake mixture it's 
probably really unhealthy. But that's one kind of spatula, okay? There's another kind, which is this kind of spatula, okay? And this is the kind of spatula you might use when you're frying eggs, for example, and you want them over easy. So you use the spatula to flip the egg. You can use a spatula to flip burgers, okay? So both used in cooking, but there's different kinds of spatula. This is my favorite because of the cake mixture. I love raw cake mixture <laughs> for dough. Yes, for dough, for cake mixture, for cleaning out the bowl. Oh, okay. Okay, so if there are no questions, we'll move on. And the next one, it's another one. If you notice, there's a lot of French words. I've always said to you, in cooking, we've borrowed a lot from the French because they're very good at cooking. <laughs> so the next one's also a French word. It's a word that's come from the French. And again, you've got that little thing, mm, do I pronounce it the way a French person would pronounce it or not? <laughs> so that would give you the choice of to pronounce the T or not. Now, a lot of people say cruet. Okay, cruet. Some people say cruet. It's a little pretentious to call it a cruet, uh, but you can do it if you want to, because it's from the French. So uh, we'll call it cruet. Okay, and a cruet is it a pie crust, a garlic press, or a small container of salt, pepper, etc. Okay, well, those of you who did the, the um, challenge will know that it is a small container for salt, pepper, etc. That etc. means you can have more than one thing in a cruet. And we often talk about cruet sets. Yeah, a cruet set. Again, it's something you're more likely to find in a hotel or... If you're unlucky and you get married, you might be given one of these because for some reason, they're very common wedding present um, gifts. OK, so when you get married, you end up maybe with three toasters and four cruet sets. <laughs> if you're really unlucky. <laughs> so, oh, let me get rid of my spatulas. And here we have a cruet set, a nice old fashioned one. OK, uh, found it on Pinterest. This is an antique cruet set. So they've been around a long time. And um, it's a set because it's usually on a base. Yeah? And it might be more modern than this, but it would be on a tray of some sort, maybe with a handle, maybe not. But all kept together as a set. Yeah. And then you'd have your salt and pepper. And you'd also have um, other containers, maybe for sauces, for other condiments. And if you remember, we've covered condiments in previous sessions. What makes a condiment a condiment? Things that are used to enhance the flavor of food. So this one looks like it's a cruet set with salt, pepper, and then a bottle for oil and a bottle for vinegar. So you could maybe make a salad dressing. And you can see it all goes together in a nice little set. And these are probably silver. As I say, these are antique. But you can get reproduction ones. As I say, if you're very unlucky and you get married, you might end up with four of these uh, in your wedding present. <laughs> for Maggie, maybe for Maggie, yes. <laughs> if you're into such things. Shreya, yes. Again, don't forget to mark your questions as a question, they um, not are they being used in hotel? Are they used in hotels? Okay, so yes, they are used uh, in hotels and in cafes. Uh, sometimes you'll find them, and it's not quite as nice because it would just be a little bowl with a load of sachets in it. That's not really a cruet set. Okay, that's just condiments. Uh, a cruet set is normally much finer. So in uh, upmarket hotels, if you like, you might find they bring you a cruet set to the table. 
okay? But yes, they are used in hotels. Are they being used means now, yeah? Are you using that cruet set or can I have it? Um, but are they used in hotels regularly, okay? So yes, they are. Um, yes, next, for liquid, for any, a bottle would be used for liquid, of course. Um, maybe some sauce, that kind of thing. Uh, tomato sauce, that could go in the cruet set too. But generally, I think the picture that I was sharing um, would be uh, oil, vinegar, uh, salt, pepper. Okay, that that's the sort of um, standard use, if you like, for such things. Okay. Okay, the next one, we got to something again from the French. Bouquet garni, bouquet garni, bouquet garni, bouquet garni. I've heard both being pronounced that way. Okay. Hyacinth bouquet, yes. Mrs. Bucket. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, it's from the French uh, because we take a lot of French words in um, English when it comes to cooking. And a bouquet garni is literally, it's like a bouquet, um, but it's for cooking, okay? So you'd have it, this is what a bouquet garni is. It's a garnish of herbs tied together. And um, I think what you can see here is you can see some rosemary, lemongrass, um, parsley, some thyme and a bay leaf all tied together and you just pop it into your stew or your soup and then you pull it out when it's been cooked okay so a bunch of mixed herbs okay mixed herbs so not parsley used as a garnish that's just a garnish uh, not edible flowers but a bunch of mixed herbs all tied together in order to uh, flavor the food. So that's a typical bouquet garni. You can actually get bouquet garni that look like tea bags. Okay. And I'll tell you a little story about that. Um, a bouquet garni tea bag. Okay. They can look um, unusual. Okay. So you can make a little bag for a bouquet garni that looks really nice, sort of like this. Okay, so there's a beautiful little bouquet garni and you can put that into your cooking and it's much easier to fish it out. However, some idiots make bouquet garni that look like this. Now, you tell me what that looks like. Does it look like a bunch of herbs? Not really. And the problem with them looking like this is when you go out for a meal with your mother and they bring the soup and she finds one of these in her soup and she calls the waitress over and she goes, there's a tea bag in my soup. <laughs> and you have to go, mum, mum, no, it's not. It's, it's the herbs. It's not a tea bag. <laughs> Very embarrassing moment. And the waitress was highly amused. So a uh, bouquet garni can come in many different forms, uh, but it's generally just mixed herbs together um, used to flavor a stew or a soup. OK, so <laughs> one of my chat, my 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 uh, favorite childhood memories uh, is that one. I have to say I loved it. There's a tea bag in my soup. <laughs> no, mum, there isn't, honestly. <laughs> Um, you can get it dried and not pulvered, powdered. You can get it dried and powdered too. Yes, you can. Um, but by then it tends to be called mixed herbs. The bouquet garni is more, they're, they're actually together. They're bound together, either tied or in a bag. Okay. Otherwise it's just, if you just sprinkle them into your soup, then it's just mixed herbs. Okay, April. Um, yes. Marco, to fish it out. If you've got something in your in a liquid that isn't meant to be there, then you fish it out. OK, uh, if you fall in the water, you might want somebody to come and fish you out. OK, to fish something out. 
and it has to be in liquid. I suppose that's that's where the fish comes from. But yes, there was this tea bag in my mind. And it shouldn't have been there. They did apologise. They said, oh, I'm so sorry. The, the chef should have fished that out before he served it. But um, these things happen. OK. <laughs> but it was funny. I have to say it was very amusing. OK, the next one, my favourite, a decanter. Now, the questions were, uh, the, the possible answers were, the person who serves food from a large container to individual plates, a container for wine, or a type of preserved jar. And, of course, a decanter, those of you who got it right, and I think everybody got this one right, a decanter is specially for wine, and again, form and function. You can get lots of different kinds of decanters. Um, and generally, you take the wine from the bottle and you decant it to decant. OK, so you can ask for your wine to be decanted. Normally, it's um, only done for very fine wine or old wine to stop the any dregs from getting into the wine that you're going to serve. And what you do is you gradually pour the wine or other liquid, could be port, for example, generally alcohol, and you take it from one container into another to separate any sediment. So if you've got ever had old wine or old port, by the time you get to the bottom of the bottle, um, you, you might have sediment, uh, especially the finer, older wines okay so the idea is you take it from this bottle and you put it into normally some fancy kind of bottle i've got a decanter like this at home uh, i haven't got a funnel like that but i've got something similar this is meant to aerate the wine quickly but to be honest you can do it in a food blender if you're so inclined <laughs> just pour the wine into a food blender whizz it around for about two minutes serve it it's like it's been breathing for an hour <laughs> You heard that here first, okay, <laughs> little trick of the trade. Um, then you've got this kind of shape, you've got this kind of shape. They're all decanters, okay? Um, they're all the same. So you pour it from one container into another container, okay? Okay, no questions. Good, good, good. Let's move on. Now, this one got some consternation from Monique. <laughs> it's a shame she's not here. And she warned Shiny, Shiny, be careful, Shiny. And yes, the word faggot. Now, this is very British English, OK? This is extremely British English. Faggots in the UK, and let's have a look again at the, the question, uh, the possible answers. A mixed meat result including liver, a tied bunch of herbs, a floor mop. And if you didn't know what a faggot was, then any of them could be the right answer. But the right answer is a mixed meat bristle, including liver. And it is very British English. And you can see here, very famous um, thing. I don't, I've never seen it anywhere apart from the UK. Never. Mr. Brain's faggots in a rich West Country sauce. <laughs> OK, take them, take the lid out, stick it in the oven and you've got four faggots. They're like very large meatballs, but to be a faggot, you have to have liver in it. Uh, to be honest, I can't stand them. They're always got gristle and fat and bleh, horrible things, but some people love them. Uh, so who am I to say don't try them? If you want such thing, try it next time you're in the UK. Say, so, have you got faggots on the menu? Now, the warning from... Uh, Monique was it can mean so it can be used usually in America but it's also used in Britain to describe someone who's gay and if you call somebody a faggot it's not a very nice thing to say although I know gay people who call each other faggots I guess that's different they they're doing it uh, in an amusing way so it can be it can be an unfortunate one in America don't go into a restaurant in America and order faggots okay <laughs> But in the UK, generally, we know it means meatballs. All right. A rissole is a type. Again, a rissole is um, a word we use in cooking uh, to say something's been put sort of joined together, if you like, compressed. Now, it can be a meat rissole is meat and spices compressed together, usually coated, uh, but just generally um, 
means for, sort of forced together like a croquette. Okay, so a risole can be a kind of meat, um, like a burger almost, and um, you can get different kinds of risoles. Okay. And it's British, okay? It is British. It's a British word, a rissel. You can also get potato rissels, to be honest, when they've been pushed together and made into like potato cakes and fried, okay? Generally, it means a meaty mixture. But to be a faggot, a rissel has to contain liver. And then it turns from a rissel into a faggot, okay? Okay, April's asked in a blender. Um, yes, in a blender. The wine, to aerate wine, yes. Just stick it in a blender. Just two seconds, really quickly. And then you've got aerated wine. That's all it does. It just aerates the wine. Try it. Try it next time you have a bottle of wine and you haven't had time to open it before you wanted to drink it. Because you should. it should be done with red wine only. And make sure that your uh, blender is very, very clean. No, no smell of garlic in it, etc. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll end up with garlicky smelling, um, garlicky smelling wine. But yeah, as you can see here, faggot, a gay man, faggot, um, sticks of wood tied together and used as fuel for a fire. Okay, so a faggot of wood. And here, down here, a ball of meat mixed with bread and herbs, fried or cooked in sauce. Okay. So, three different meanings, but of course, the meaning that we wanted um, was here a mixed meat rissole, including liver. Okay, then we got to one. Now, those of you who've been, um, who follow the recipes on the English um, website, learnenglish.de website, you'll have, you should have come across the colander before because we use a colander to strain things, okay? Um, so here we've got, again, um, the three choices, a large sieve used to strain water from food, a type of cauliflower, a knife used for boning. Well, a colander, and as I say, those of you who um, know how colanders um, from the recipes, then you should have got this one uh, without even looking it up, okay? So a colander is and I wouldn't say like a sieve, but it's very difficult to sort of, you know, it's a bowl with holes in it. <laughs> and what you do is you can use it for anything that you've been boiling. You can strain the water from anything, from rice, from potatoes, from carrots. Uh, and the idea is you put everything into here from your pan, from your saucepan, and the water drains out, leaving behind just the food. Okay, so that is a colander. Now, um, if you were to search colander on the web, then you might also find what people use colanders for uh, is for dressing up. And I do like this one. <laughs> for some reason, people have been wearing colanders on the head and posting it online. So there you go. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it personally. But what the heck? <laughs> um, Julie, any food you think compressed into the shape of a ball called a rissel? You can do, um, but we have other words for it as well. Okay, so it tends to mean meat. It tends to mean meat. But I have had potato rissels, cheese rissels, rice rissels. <laughs> food's very... Um, food's very... Uh, you could, with food, you get so much vocabulary, and that's one of the reasons I did this challenge was I was um, looking for the next challenge, and I thought, let's have a break from pictures, and let's go into the definitions, because the definitions, as you could see, um, it's very varied, okay? And food vocabulary has its own jargon. It has its own lingo, if you like. And you have to learn it in context, okay? Best way to learn lots of food vocabulary, go on a cookery course. 
don't don't go on a an English course once your English is good enough to follow instructions. Go on a cookery course. You'll learn much more on about food vocabulary then. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, Marco, yes, to to drain, uh, to drain, not strain. Well, you could strain it, I guess. To strain or to drain spaghetti. Don't forget spaghetti, spaghetti. Strange spelling, I know, but I think we took it from the Italian. <laughs> okay, so um, if anybody would like to come and join me for the last 10 minutes, if you raise your hands now, and uh, you're more than welcome to come and join me. Have you got any questions about the challenge itself? Okay. Okay, April, I'm going to invite you in. Almost perfect spelling. Marco, when it comes to spelling, it's a little bit like pronunciation. As long as people understand you, it's all good. <laughs> the only time it really matters is if you're writing something that other people are going to read that's important, like a business report or a, a book. And even then, you can send it to the editors and they can fix any spelling mistakes for you. Uh, or a business report or a test. If you're doing a test and exam, then yes, it matters. Otherwise, I understood what you meant. I'm only correcting you because that's what I'm here for. <laughs> okay, Julie. Okay. Let's call you into um, the call and see who turns up. So um, I'm going to stop screen sharing now. So I'll disappear for a second. See who's able to join me. April, hello. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning, Lynn. It works with this la uh, laptop. Yay! I was, I was testing, Lynn, because uh, last time with the other laptop, with this connection cable, I couldn't enter voice. And I think, okay, I will try another. The other laptop, it's, it's better. It's with i7. The other was i5. Uh, the ah, okay. yeah so it is it is matter yeah? connection cable the the lap the 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 your computer uh the operating system <laughs> the operating system yeah it that's it really do matter all of those things yeah? i i think it does yes i mean it's unfortunate that um this software can't work on every single platform possible. As an attendee, yes, you can pretty much come and listen um, on practically anything. I've, I've tried my tablet, my old uh, tablet that runs an old version of Android. I've tried my mobile phone. I've tried my computer. And I've tried um, an old laptop that runs Windows 7 one that runs Windows 8 and my computer which runs Windows 10. So I know that it works on a variety. I've not, not tried any Apple or Linux stuff, but um, uh, Aladdin's been in on Linux. So we know that it works across platforms. But when you want to present, then yes, you do need to have the right, um, you have to have the right connection, you have to have the right equipment, you have to have the right operating system as well. Abhishek asked to join as well. So Abhishek, I'm going to add you and invite you as a speaker too. So Julie's not joined us yet. I'm hoping that she'll be able to. Um, Julie, hello. Nice to see you. Now, your mic will be muted, Julie, so you'll need to switch it on, okay? Can you hear me, Julie? We can't hear you at the moment. Julie. So, April, did you have any questions about the um, challenge? Did you enjoy it? Was it fun? Was it yeah. um, better to have the pictures or? Yeah, if, if the picture is uh, too easy, I think, yeah, because uh, then you don't have to sing anymore. You can <laughs> <see>. <laughs> but uh, 
I think I have to uh, look at the dictionary for a couple of uh, words. Not all of the words I uh, it's it's familiar to me actually. Like riser, I was thinking in the at the first uh, at first I think oh okay that is must be someone. But then I was uh, searching in the on internet and it wasn't. <laughs> it's a bit of a shock, yes. <laughs> Yeah. I know, I know it is a I and I honestly it's the most stupid word really when you think about it logically but English isn't logical uh, English is crazy somebody thought oh they look like little bits of rice I'll call it a ricer you know thanks a lot for that why didn't you call it a potato <laughs> or a squisher or a squasher <laughs> But that's when, you know, you'll never know every single word in English. Um, what you need to do is look at the words that you use in your daily life. Look at the words you use at work, the specialist vocabulary that you need to learn to do your job. Um, and uh, the rest of it, you just pick it up as you go along, depending on whether you're cooking, whether you're um, in what job you're working who you interact with out in the world um, it all develops your uh, vocabulary so julie how come we can't hear you um have uh, you checked hi, your... oh hello uh, hi <laughs> uh, so you can hear me right i can hear you now yes i think and if i can hear you it generally means everybody can hear uh, you so that's good so julie um i don't think you took the challenge did you yes I have you did? Oh, good. Sorry, where are you then? Let me just see if I can find you. Hang on. I couldn't mm -hmm. remember seeing your answers. Sorry about that. Let me go back. Um, let's see. How, oh, yeah, just before uh, just before Hazel. That's right. Oh, that's right. You just wrote down the letters, which is fine. I did say you can just write down the letters. I think it was yeah, only Hazel. Yeah, that's actually difficult for me, but... Uh, <laughs> I just searched from the internet and then I have answered answered the, all the questions because it was difficult for me. Um, yeah, I think you only just got the one wrong though. You did very well. Um, and it wasn't specifically wrong, I'll be honest, um, because when you're looking at these words, um, the, now, which was it? Number nine, I think. Um, Number nine, fag yeah. fagot, I think. Yeah, which is the faggot. That's right. Um, some people do call like a bouquet garni a faggot. A faggot, like because you've got this idea of the faggot of wood being bound together. Um, some people do call it um, a faggot, but generally the the standard term in the UK is that it's the uh, meat rissole. Yeah, a mixed meat rissole including liver. So. Um, yeah, but quite a few wrote um, the B answer for that. So it's not strictly wrong. Um, I would I would accept it as well. But it's very, it's an unusual use. Of the, it's non-standard English. Let's put it that way. Not my favorite, non-standard English. Okay. So well done. And did you enjoy doing it? Yeah. You say you I like enjoyed. cooking, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But uh, like uh, this all words, which uh, like uh, here you have mentioned like riser, dredger, cutler, and brain, uh, brain Mary. I have not used those words actually. But do you have similar equipment in your kitchen? Yeah, sieve. Yeah. We are uh, sieve. I had a sieve. Yeah, uh, a sieve. Yeah. Not a colander. No. This uh, like a sieve a riser. I think a type of sieve through which potato or uh, not this kind of sieve potatoes we are not uh, we are not mashing potatoes in that it's just to like uh, we use uh, like flour and we used to do like separating flour with uh, like some other ingredients uh, so we use that kind of sieve so it was okay, not do you mean same. do you mean flour yeah flour flour yeah you say flour because if you say flour it's okay. the thing you stand on okay flower it's like flower and flower they're um, flower. homophones yeah like flower like flower it, yeah yeah. Okay. yeah we use sieves for that too and for getting the lumps out of flour and icing sugar etc um april you said you use um a sieve as a dredger yes 
Uh, yes, everything I used uh, um, for flour, for uh, icing sugar, for example. I used that too. I have a small one, a mini one. It's only 10 centimeters of diameter. And I used that to make uh, my tiramisu, to, 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 uh, to flower my tiramisu with chocolate. <laughs> Ah, okay. Oh, that. Ah, sorry. This that's when you have to say to dust. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to okay, dust okay. it with chocolate because to flour is literally to put it onto a board ready to prepare uh, dough or a mixture. Uh, and when you're using it as a decoration, then we say dust. Dust it with chocolate or dust it with icing sugar. It's crazy English, isn't it? <laughs> And the one, um, which one was that? Uh, this the colander, uh, the colander, colander, uh, colander, colander. The one you you showed us that is um, with the quite uh, big holes, but you have also one uh, with uh, kind of sheaf plin. Uh, do you call it the same? Is that also a colander? Sorry, you, you've got one with a kind of what? Yeah, it is the same ball, the same ball, but yeah. uh, not from metal. Yeah, it is from metal, but uh, the 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 bottom where where the where the holes uh, are can, there. Can you screen share? <laughs> oh, I I haven't found any. Oh, okay, I don't. It can know. be. I think uh, I think it can be of any material, uh, plastic or. Uh, or some other no, material. No, it's metal. It's metal, Julie. But metal. Uh, I mean, um, the one you it's you got show a flat us, bottom. No, no. Also like no. a ball, like a ball, uh -huh. like you show us. But the 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 one where you uh, you can let when where you can drain the water. Uh huh. From another sort of. Uh, it's it's like a kind of shift. Uh, can you type up a kind of because I'm I'm not sure what you're trying to say a kind of sieve of sieve 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 okay yeah. so it's more like a sieve well it's probably yeah, a sieve yeah, then yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, but <laughs> it's in the form of that kind of that kind of bowl okay okay well believe it or not are you coming to the book reading um, session in Kitely in a bit April yeah okay we're going to go to sea in a sieve. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you mean? I don't know. Maybe no. That's that's a colander. Um, but if it if it's a very fine mesh, then it's a sieve. And if it's very small holes, it's a colander. Okay. So there's a difference between mesh, which is made of wire, and metal that's had holes dr drilled into it. Okay. Why so you call it mesh? Uh, mesh. M a s s. Oh, M-E-S-H, -E -E -S -S a mesh. S-H, yeah. ah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's if it's... I mean that one, yes. If it's a mesh made out of fine wires, I'd still call it a sieve. If it's a sheet of metal with holes drilled into it, I would call it a colander. Okay. And there are so many. I mean, um, I won't screen share because we haven't got time, and it takes it takes me out of the call. There are so many different kinds of the same thing because whenever you create something, of course, somebody will think, "Well, it could be better if it was square or flat or round or smaller holes or bigger holes or holes that are pretty shapes because it looks nicer." It's just um, the one I showed you was an enamel colander, which was green with a cream in her. Of course, you get the stainless steel ones. And as Julie said, different materials, doesn't matter, plastic, metal, uh, ceramic, you know, they're still a colander, but their, their form and function is still the same. The material doesn't change the name of the item until it does. <laughs> but a okay, so, has mm -hmm. to be a ball, yeah? Yes, generally, yes. It's a round shape. Um, otherwise, it's a drainer <laughs> or a strainer. You've got different words to drain, to strain, um, and colanders are for draining and for straining liquid. Okay.
and a steamer is also like that steamer but it's yeah a steamer you can use a steamer as a colander oh i need to drain this rice i know i'll use my steamer but a steamer is for steaming not actually for using it as a drainer it's like the spatula you know you're meant to use a spatula to clean out the bowl but you can use a spatula to hit your husband over the head with it's still a spatula <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and in building uh, term also, they they call it also spatula to to. Uh, they use that the builder, the builder. Builders use spatulas. Um, don't think so. What do you mean for putting plaster on walls? Um, yes, yes, putting plaster. Um. You can get a spatula in in dental work, um, but yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Plus the spatula. What do I call it? I'm sure I don't call it a spatula. Um, that's odd, isn't it? Yeah. No, you're right. If you're doing, I'm not a plasterer though, so <laughs> I was like, do they? Do they? <laughs> I know they use them in dental work, and uh, I just call it a trowel. That's what I call it, a trowel. I call it a trowel. Not a spatula, but you're right. Um, I've not just seen it, and some people call it, oh, sorry, trowel. Not towel, trowel. Okay. So, but some people, yeah, seem to call it a spatula or a plastering spatula. Oh, strange. Strange. And you can also use them in icing. If you ice cakes, you need a spatula to get a nice, smooth surface. Oh, I had spelt it correctly, trowel. Okay, so on that note, um, unless there are any more questions, we will finish there. This will be replayed, so if you want to watch it again, um, and next week we'll have another challenge to discuss, which will start tomorrow. So don't forget, go to the forum, log in to the groups, and uh, you'll find it in the Join Us webinar group. Um, and it'll be vocabulary challenge number 47. And this week it will be picture based. I know April just said it was uh, um, a little easier, but it's not meant to be difficult, okay? <laughs> As I say, it's not a test, it's not an exam, it's just for fun, okay? <laughs> Any questions before I disappear and go and grab my coffee? Like April, you know about everything, not everything, only some things, I think you meant to say. <laughs> You're welcome, Shiny. Shiny, you didn't join us in the call today. <laughs> Abhishek, I don't know what happened to you. Um, I did uh, invite you into the call. Send me a message in the forum if you're having any kind of um, technological problems because we can try to help you sort them out. Um, best day for sorting out any techie problems at the moment is a Friday because Aladdin's sessions haven't started yet. Um, of course, he can also help you with these these things, getting you into calls, getting the voice to work. Um, if you have a look at Friday's TGIF recording, you'll see that we've managed to get Shiny into the call and with voice working. And of course, having done that, she doesn't try to join us today. <laughs> You're hungry. Go and have a faggot. <laughs> oh, no, don't. Very dubious meat. <laughs> Okay, so um, I don't know of anything in today's session that would have made me hungry, to be honest, but uh, there you go. I guess I need my coffee, though, so I'm going to go make my coffee. Thanks for joining me, and uh, thanks for coming and talking to me, April and Julie. You're very brave, and it worked. Yay! <laughs> so, April, next time, use, your lap use that laptop, okay? <laughs> Okay, take care, everybody. I'll see you in Kitely in uh, 20 minutes, all right? And as I say, we're going to see you in a sieve. Ask me for a teleport because we're in a slightly different area of the sim. I'll look forward to seeing you there. Take care. Bye. As far as I can find out, there's no ulterior motive. It's just got that word rice in it that can be confusing. Dredger, 
That is confusing because a dredger can be more than one kind of dredger, one of which is used in the kitchen, the other one not used in the kitchen. OK, so a dredger, nothing to do with um, frying, nothing to do with tea. You might, if you'd just um, searched for the term dredger, you might have come across these guys. Did any of you see these dredgers? And that would be um, quite, yeah, quite difficult to figure out what's that got to do with kitchen utensils. <laughs> these dredgers are used literally to dredge riverbeds and bays, anywhere that might get silted up. OK, but none of the definitions given had anything to do with rivers or removing silt from water. So you can rule out these dredgers and we'll go on to this kind of dredger. And I've got one in my kitchen cupboard. It's also called a flower shaker. Uh, Rima, yeah, Marco, you've just written a strong grip is important when you're using a ricer yes you need a strong grip <laughs> because you're really forcing the cooked and you need well cooked potatoes as well don't do it with half cooked potatoes it'd be very difficult <laughs> but anyhow back to the dredger now in these dredgers you can put flour in and sometimes people put sugar in okay and if you notice here it's got flour shaker dredger so it's a flour shaker or a flour dredger so well done everybody a sugar or flour holder with fine holes in its lid question what would you want such a thing for why would you want a dredger any ideas has anybody ever used one so has anyone ever used potatoes cooked potatoes through it in order to mash them now, when you're cooking potatoes, you can do mashed potatoes with a masher, which involves a lot of hard work from your shoulder and your arm. Uh, or you can use a ricer, and a lot of professional chefs use a ricer. Now, here's a picture of a ricer. Okay, you put the potatoes into the um, sort of colander sieve part, and there's a handle, and there's a plate. Um, a metal plate and as you push the handle down the metal plate pushes forces the potatoes through the little holes until you end up with these riced potatoes which are like mashed potatoes okay so that if you all found a, a picture of it and I do recommend for some of these challenges pictures are always best uh, this will give you an idea of what a ricer is and it has nothing to do with rice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not really. I found it quite funny. But yes, it's a, it's not even a trick word. It's just a word that's come about, I suppose, because when the potato comes out, it comes out in little white pieces. Maybe looks a little bit like rice. Ah, uh, oh, I okay april yes i've got you now yes i wrote good morning afternoon evening hello i see what you mean i thought you meant it was blue on uh shiny's uh name you told me shiny was showing up blue the other week yes that's that's the um highlighted message when you're presenting april you'll be able to do that too <laughs> okay is that clear now april Okay, let me clear the message then, so so as not to um, that blue broadcast with this laptop. Yeah, sorry, I did I did misunderstand you. <laughs> not not the way you you wrote it though. Just me, just me. It's Monday morning. Okay, the next word that we had was dredger, and again dredger. Now ricer only has one meaning. The webinar. Bear with me a second. Somebody's asked me a question and I can't see it clearly, so. Hang on a second. Whoop, nope. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. That's odd. Um, okay. So I see that blue broadcast with this laptop, Lynn. Oh, April. Okay. I don't know. 
I don't know why you're seeing that. Um, it might be that you need to clear the cache on your laptop, um, but I should be the only one who is blue because I'm presenting. Shiny shouldn't be in blue. <laughs> okay. You think April got it right? Yeah, most of you got it right, actually. Most of you got it right. So well done. It wasn't difficult, but and there's no cheating in the um, in this particular challenge. You can Google your answers. You can check your answers. You can use a dictionary. I don't mind. It's not a test. OK, so don't worry about some people ask me, is it OK to use a dictionary? Yes, of course it is. That's what you would do in real life. It's not a test. It's a challenge. OK. <laughs> OK, so let's have a look at the actual answers. Um, first of all, we need to look at the questions, of course. So the questions uh, were slightly different, as I say. Normally we do a picture, but this week we did um, definitions. So I gave you a word, and you had to correct, you had to guess or work out the correct definition for each word. And the words were a little tricky, I think. Okay. So the first one was ricer. Now. As learners, you probably saw the word rice and thought, well, it must be something to do with cooking rice or someone who grows rice. But it isn't. It's neither of those things. It's basically, it's a kind, it looks like a sieve or it looks like a colander, which we'll come to later. Uh, and it forces. Oh, good morning. I hope everybody can hear me. And uh, Monday morning, first day of the week, uh, as I said in, I think, a lot of the sessions already, the first five minutes, it's just for us to say hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And um, the call will actually start um, sort of five minutes in, five minutes ish in. So I'm not late, April. <laughs> And I hope everybody had a nice weekend. What are you supposed to do here? Well, Shreya, if you have a question, mark it as a question. And um, you can do that where you write your message. You'll see a little drop down menu. And if you click on that, you can mark your question as a question. So let me do that for you. You see how it's now got a big um, bright question mark next to it. The reason you do that is so I can notice that you've asked a question. If the call gets busy, um, I'll try to answer everybody's questions, but it's a lot easier for me if you mark them as a question. OK, so I will answer you and um, I will say at Shreya. Shreya, yep, at Shreya. Uh, first, we will say hi. <laughs> then we will look at the vocabulary challenge from last week. Now, if you don't know what the vocabulary challenge is, then um, you'll you'll learn today, and maybe you can get involved next week. OK, so I'll start screen sharing now. Bear with me a second. Challenge. Um, if there are no more questions, the vocab challenge. Very important um, that you know where it is first. It's on the forum, <laughs> but it's not on the forum in the main pages. It's in the groups. So if you want to take part in the vocabulary challenge, there's one every week and just follow the instructions you'll find under groups. You'll find um, a topic called vocabulary challenge with a number. So as you can see, We've done 46 so far, not quite a year's worth, but nearly. And then um, you'll find the actual challenge under the link. You'll find how to log in. And you'll also see in the calendar that it's only on from Tuesday to Thursday. So you have to get your answers in 
by Thursday. OK, but a few of us um, took part. So and everybody did very well. It was slightly different this week. It was more uh, definitions this week. So April and Shiny, Landai, Monique, Julie and Hazel, um, all of you very well done for taking part. Um, so before I give you the actual answers, any questions about the challenge? Was uh, Shiny, you mentioned something uh, that some of the words have more than one answer. Yeah, and um, that's the case with many English words. There's more than one definition. OK, um, but only one definition would have fitted each of those uh, questions. OK, so really, um, yes, there's always going to be more than one definition in many English words. But context is king, as I always say to you. You have to look at the context and which one fits. Um, so for the one you struggled with, and there were a few with more than one meaning, but the one you struggled with, unfortunately, has a slightly rude answer as well. Uh, but you should know me better by now. Only one of the actual answers fitted the word. <laughs> OK. Um, let me just have a look at 